when someone comes to you asking you how long you got to be in school, they're not ready for nothing. I've been in school since I was four years old. Yesterday I was 78 in five months. You never stop learning. So we don't mind going to school for 12 years to get a 12 grade education. Then you go another five or six or maybe eight to get a college education. And then you get put under a master somebody and then you come out to be a master somebody. If you start studying this Bible when you're four or five, when you get 50, 55, or 60, you begin to understand, I really don't know all of this. Amen. But see what you need to understand. You don't have to know all of this. All of this know you. You're not studying about the teacher. You're studying the attitudes, the concepts of the teacher. So a Bible education is just a translation out of God's heart into his son's heart, into your heart, into the world. Are y'all there? Amen. It's just, that's the way it is. And when you see it like that, you understand it better. We're going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so thankful. We know we pray the same prayer over and over because we got the same God. We want to tell you again, we love you. And we know now that we didn't make it back yonder without you. And since we learned a little about you, then we used to know, we know we can't make it now without you. For in you we live, yes, sir. In you we live, we move, and we have our being. Thank you so much for those that are sincere about their Holy Ghost future. To the extent they're willing to sacrifice some time that they might gain the scripture that was tamed the devil. Back off, Satan. Get on away from us. Do it in Jesus' name. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now you've heard of Paul and you read them letters about Paul like they don't mean nothing. He was shipwrecked three times. The sea destroyed the whole big ship. And this is illogical. If the storm destroyed the whole ship, how are you going to stay in the same storm on a board that came from the ship? And how can you lay on a flat board in a boisterous sea a day and a half? That ain't normal. Amen, amen, amen. Let me tell you something. Yesterday, you know the link that I got? I was here, it got total out. Two other cars, total out. And I'm going 35 miles an hour. A car hit me on the left, a car hit me on the right. I hit the steering wheel, blood coming out of my nose. I'm about to pass out. Did you know nobody paid me no attention? They were calling on the cell phone, calling people to look out for themselves. And I'm sitting there, how come they ain't, <laughs> how come ain't nobody coming out? What do you see about me? The law said they calling their relatives. Call your son. So I called my son, and my son called my other son, my other son called my wife. And I'm bleeding profusely out of my nose because my head hit the steering wheel. 
Now let me tell you something. About true family. Hey. When I saw my son, I felt better with the blood coming out of my nose. The car is total wreck. So I'm standing up and the blood flowing down. Head hurting like a dog because my head hit something. Two other cars are total. The other one might be able to be savaged. So James came. I called him. I'm talking about my shipwreck. See, they were riding ships then. I was riding the Lincoln today. The devil don't care about your transportation. He just want to hinder you from going, hey, going where God told you to. He mean to kill you. And you ain't no different from me. Blood pouring out of my nose. And I'm standing up with my arm on the one door that will open. Hood jammed back up to the windshield. James come and asked me a question. He saw the blood. <laughs> he said, are you hurt, Daddy? That's a good question. I said, no. Now, the other people had the ambulance taking their people to the hospital. I'm just sitting there like that, like that. Hit me, knocked me over the curb, and that metal rod there knocked that rod down. James said, I'm a policeman. Called an ambulance for my father. Man, they got in business then. They laid me on a board flat because they don't want your back to be moved. They want you to lay flat. I was more comfortable standing <laughs> than I was on that board. And they asked me all kind of questions. How many fingers you see? What's your name? How old are you? What's your address? What kind of car are they trying to see? Am I alert? So they brought this stretcher thing, this piece of wood. And they put me on that wood, put me in the ambulance. And they were testing me all the way to the hospital because the cars were total. And I ain't got no business standing up. Then I went into chills. Then I had fevers, chills and fevers, shaking. And they called the nurses. They come running in there. We got to strip your clothes off him to waist up. Can you bend over? I said, yeah. They start testing from the bottom of my back. You heard here? You heard here? You heard here? You heard here? They took my neck. You heard here? They were looking at one another. I said, no, no, no. I was saying in my heart what I say in this Bible college. Lord, I will. I thank you. When they got through examining me, they were amazed. My nose had stopped bleeding. I hit my face on something. All the pain was gone. And the nurses, I, I could hear them outside the door. Shit, 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 shit. I said, yeah, but. <laughs> so they sent a male nurse in there. Have you had all your shots? I said, I don't know. We need to give you a tetanus shot. Now, I don't know what no tetanus shot is, but. They, they had to do something because they want to make money. So they took this arm out there and said, said, look at his muscles. <laughs> huh? I keep this body working, brother. And I took my shirt off. They started looking at my body. I said, what you think? My wife was slap all the looking at me like that. So they gave me this shot. By that time, James and my son Jeff were there. And I heard outside the curtain, 
All we can do is dismiss him. He said he'd be all right. So they dismissed me. I feel better than I do now. Wife driving a car, we're going to pay some bills. See, Paul was shipwrecked three times. Within 30 minutes after I left that hospital, they're waking on the highway going out south. The one side is finished. On the east side, the west side is not finished. One of those big tandem trucks was loaded with gravel, was going to raise itself up to let the gravel come out and broke a power line. That power line was right there in front of my car. All those thousands of cars on both sides. I could have stood in front of my car and picked that cable up. And they running it, uh, apologizing to the phone. I, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know the truck. I didn't know. I said, baby, let me drive. Yep, yep. I said, let me drive. I was this close to all them thousands of votes. And the man said, back up just a little bit, mister. Now, the, the power line was on top of that tandem up there that had that load of gravel. It was hanging right down in front of my car on the ground across me. Of all the cars on the expressway, I had to be the one. Listen to me. There was no accident. They will miss me in the accident, try to kill me again. Now you watch your life. You watch your life. He wants you. Because your foot is on his head. He wants you. I said, he wants you bad. Went to get my car. See, when you have a wreck, those record company, they rushing to get that car. It cost me $140 for one night. $140. I said, I'm getting that like that. Right. Well, I called AAA. James said, move it across the street from where you live. So they charge you $65, $70, $80 a day. Now, AAA going to only pay four and a half miles. I'm eight miles from my house. The man brought the car and dumped it off. Ain't said a word. <laughs> he said nothing. I said, I only had one dollar. I prayed my prayer. Now, you are senior students. You listen and you learn. I said, Lord, I, I thank you. Old devil tried to kill me twice today. Now, I know those lines that fell down right in front of my car was hot. Because the man in charge of it was moving with a wooden broom handle. Now, now hey, I don't know a whole bunch. But I know you can't get no charge through dry wood. Don't, don't do it with a stick of green wood now. Ah? And I've been, I've been high in this spirit all day. I said, Lord, thank you. Now, I am no exception. The devil don't hate me more than he does you. And God don't love me more than he does you. Because we are one body. The body of Christ. And the devil got one job. Kill it. Can't get it done. Because I was wrecked three times. He said I spent three nights in the deep. That did the edge. You ain't going to sink no big ship right next to the shore. <laughs> but the miracle is, the storm was big and powerful enough to destroy that commercial vessel. 
And Paul said, I survived for a day and a half on a board. Now that's illogical. Because it takes a whole lot of board to make the boat. And all of them other boats couldn't keep the boat flat, float. And here's one boat. Now, now you can look at me like a mule, look at a new gate if you want to. But that's a miracle there. <laughs> Don't say nothing about the other people. Because I survived a wreck three times. He said, gone from one community to another. I, I fought with beasts in the jungle. Just <laughs> one man. Paul was some kind of bella boy. But before he got saved, he did the same thing to the church as the water and the beast in the jungle was trying to do to him. So my message to you is this. <clears throat> Payday is a coming. Better live right. You're going to see it again. After you get saved, you're going to see it again. I was good and saved today. But it's the devil's job. See, we got to learn to live the scripture. The devil come to steal, kill, and what? To destroy. He's trying to do it to you, not just to me. We are one place in the body of Christ. But I talk about my stuff. I had pain that had pain when that car hit me. And I still don't know what happened. But you know that scripture, you're your brother's helper. When I saw my wife and my two sons, I felt so good. I felt, huh? Oh, Jesus, here's my family. Huh? <laughs> Got up and dressed myself and came home. Amen. You wouldn't have known that I'd been in a triple accident today, yesterday, if I didn't tell you. There's no evidence of it. God Almighty, I'm telling you. I went in the hospital 30 minutes. They're trying to figure out what to do. She went down my back, the back part of my back, pressing, hurt here, nope, hurt here, nope, hurt here, hurt here, and they were looking at one another. I suppose I've been hurting. And they put that thing around my neck so I couldn't move my neck. Can you move your leg? I said, yes, ma'am, move it. Can you move your left leg? They're looking at one another. One standing here, one standing there. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, move it. They went out. Here comes the man with that needle. He, he, they got to do something. They're going to do something to you when you get to the hospital. <laughs> and after all that talk, here come a lady with a computer on a, on a couch. Just, what's your name? I said, put it in tank. <laughs> they, <laughs> they took a picture of the wreck. And they know ain't nobody supposed to come out of that wreck. <laughs> you wouldn't even know I've been in a wreck if I had to. <laughs> so this Jesus I'm telling you about, <laughs> he real. I say, he real. Amen. And I heard my old grandpa used to teach. He's a very present here. What? Yes, son, Tom. Trouble, he helped me today. He helped me today. He helped me today. And the son making plans for Mike to teach tonight. Mike to teach Thursday night. He's going to help Mike teach Thursday morning. I said, what am I going to be doing? He said, Daddy, you going to teach tonight? I said, what night is this? He said, Tuesday. I said, yes, sir. He said, Dad, see, he's 42. He's a baby saint. I'm Paul Paul, man. I've been there, boy. That, that, 
pick me up by my heels and slam my head against the ground. I've been there. I have suffered. So the devil ain't got nothing new to do to me. Because I got a head around me. You know, in Jamaica, I'm a ghost there. Get out. All they got to do is take some thorns and build a tree hedge where they don't want to go. They ain't going through them thorns. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you something, then I'm going to begin to teach you. <clears throat> if the Lord hadn't been on my side, when was it, baby? Yesterday? Yesterday, I'd be dead. Nobody walked away from that accident. <laughs> I, nobody but me. And I'm standing up on the side of the car that the door will open. And I didn't realize my nose was leaking blood. But there's a James said, Dad, why don't you sit down? I said, I was sitting down when the accident happened. <laughs> the nurses were amazed. They know people don't come out of accidents like that. They've been nursing a long time. They looked at me like I was strange. We are strange. We're the children of the almighty God. Amen. Hey, hey, we are strange and precious. And I just kept hearing God say, if I be for you. See, it wasn't no time to my, I be for you, more than whole No, sir, you better sit down and analyze that sort of means up. You're looking at a miracle. I am looking at miracles. There's no time during the day when the devil ain't scheming to try to wipe you out. And if he can't kill your body, try to kill your reputation. <coughs> Had a pastor, wife, street preachers. Worked here for years and years and years and years. Faithfully had two of them 40 pastor buses going on Sunday morning. Out there in the ghetto. They were white. Out there in the ghetto. Pick it up to the little black children and bring them to church. Somebody that know them and know my relationship with them wrote me a letter today. I came to your church twice and you didn't treat me like I was a saint. So when you get your act together, uh, now they know about to call me. So they wrote me a job. The devil is coward. I said the devil is a coward. When you get your act together, I'll come back to your church again. Now, she have not been here for three times in her life. She came for me to ordain her. So when I get to a place I don't know how to pray, I just say, Jesus. That's all you, you ain't got to talk about it. Yo, you ain't even got to call his name. He, can, he know what your heart is thinking before you say it. So he know what you're going to think. He know what you're thinking. And he knew what you funk. You know, funk is a bad word. For <laughs> huh? I don't have a spirit of sadness. You're looking at a miracle. You're looking at a miracle. Within 30 minutes, boom, boom, 
death. And the cable was broken off from the top of the side left to me, but was fed from a transformer just above my head across that highway. So when it fell, it fell right in front of my car. I could have touched it. And the people on the other side was going because there wasn't no cable laying over there. And when I saw that man handling that hot cable with a dry broomstick, I said, oh, this thing must be hot. So he laid it down flat. And because your tires are made of rubber, you're insulated. But if that metal had touched that metal top of that car, you don't know what it'll do. Because to get to the rubber, you got to go through the metal to get to the rubber. And I'm going to let you know, be, oh, Jesus. And it all happened, and I didn't know what happened until it was over. Now, let me tell you something. It's prayer time then. Oh, it's prayer time then. It's the same way when God invited me to come to heaven all those years, and I told him I ain't coming. I was a sinner. I'm going to tell you till you understand it. I saw the doors of glory closing like this. And I heard Jesus say, come in now and be shut out forever. And when I went through that door, my coattail got caught. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell it till Jesus comes. I, I barely made it. So there ain't no such thing as no super holiness saints. I know we always tell me only by the grace of God. That's real. Let me teach you so you think you've been to Bible college. Turn to Leviticus 7, 17. It's a few books to the left. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Our subject today, as it was last week, going to be till Jesus come. The power of the blood of Jesus. Now, if you got the Holy Ghost, if you got the Holy Ghost, let me show you now. You sit under this ministry long enough. Anywhere you open this book, look at me now. Anywhere you open this book, you can preach from that point. Because in the beginning, God. In the end, God. In the middle, Jesus. He hooks the two gods for couple. You see Genesis 1 and 1? I, I, I think Genesis is at the beginning of the book. Read the first four words in Genesis 1.1. One, one. In the beginning, God. Now, read the last word in Revelation 22. What's the last word in Revelation 22? A man. Genesis 1, first four words. In the beginning, God. 
Last words in the Bible? A man. His name is Jesus. So if you can lay the head of Jesus in Revelation 1 and Genesis 1, his feet will be in Revelation 22, 21. In the beginning, God. Now you hear people say things that they don't have scriptural confirmation of it, but it's real. Jesus is the bridge over troubled waters. I had two cases of troubled waters the day you hear me. Both of them had death staring right in my eyes. And when I was able to get off of that bed and dress myself, the people were, what? Listen to me. It's amazing what Jesus can do. Hallelujah. I'm teaching you now. You can read your own Bible. I want to take this word and squeeze. You see a little baby, six, eight months old, and you, you, you eating on a lemon, and you take that lemon and squeeze it in his mouth. He's just big boy. That's what I'm doing. Just a drop of God's goodness. Will all the toys of this life endure? You know, you got to learn this now. This ain't no church going gospel we're talking about. When you live holy without sin in your life, you got to heal the climb. Jesus climbed hill was called Calvary. And look what happened up there on that hill. Self died up there. Christ itself was Jesus. That was his body's name, Jesus. Now don't try to stretch your intellect to make Jesus be human. Just leave that alone. Because the first word you see in the Bible, in the beginning, God, who do you think that was? And God put flesh around himself. Now listen to it now. Try to get your head out of it. God fathered himself and called himself his son. Hey Amen. Amen. <laughs> when you father a boy, don't you call him your son? He came out from you. Are oh, y'all listening? Amen. Now, when that son gets saved, he's not supposed to represent you. He represented the God that you came out of. What's the matter? Don't the scripture say in him was life, and this life was the light of me. Jesus came out of Christ that was the spirit of God. Jesus was not a spirit. He was a body. Christ was the spirit that lives in that body. So that body is the location of Christ. Amen. So you hear people say the body of Christ. Well, that's where we are. We are the body. We ain't a whole bunch of bodies. We are the one body of Christ. Amen. And 110 times in the Bible, you'll see the name of the church, Church of God. The church of God. The church that belonged to God. Now, you can call it Baptist, Church of God in Christ, Episcopalian, and all that kind of stuff. But if, if it's really the body of God, it's Jesus. 
because Jesus is the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. It is Christ lives in our body. Now, if Christ lives in our body, our body ain't going to be... I've never seen Jesus smoke nothing. Wait, wait, wait just a minute now. I ain't no children in here. I've never seen him chase nothing. When the devil ran from Jesus, he wasn't chasing him. <laughs> it's the same way you get away from fire. Fire ain't moving. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is, where Jesus is, there is no room for sin. And if sin is in there and Jesus come in, sin just left. They can't occupy. Oh, they can't occupy the same vessel. I was going to say it, but I ain't going to say it because I'm on TV. You see, people say things to you and I to justify their sin. Oh, we just live together. We ain't doing nothing. All you had to put on, ain't doing nothing in there. Oh, we live together, but we ain't doing nothing but learn. Why do they feel it necessary to justify themselves with us? Because they see us different from them. Your light shining all right. I say, your light shining. It's shining. It's shining. It, I like to tell you about what happened to me today. My light was shining too tough today, boy. I don't know when that blood stopped flowing out of my nose. But Jesus tried. I had too much pain in front of my face. I almost fainted. On my way to the hospital, I could feel that pain drain. Hey, you better get the Holy Ghost. Ah, I said, you better get the Holy Ghost. He, he will help you. And it, did you know that stuff the Holy Ghost can do for us can't nobody do but him? Come on now. So they call him the comforter. Can't nobody <laughs> do me like Jesus. He's my friend. He picked me up and they lied. Turned me around. No, he didn't. He picked you up, turned your own self around. Huh? You can sing a lot like you can tell one or live one. So the person that called me today, been to church two or three times in 28 years, you, you think you sub. I wish she'd write in the letter. Did you know the fact that she had to write a letter showed me the spirit of cowardice? But listen to me. Your enemy don't have the guts to stand face to face. Hey! And talk to you. Because when they look in your face, they see Jesus. Well, they're supposed to. They're supposed to. When James was little, he couldn't say good. He said, Jared. I feel Jared, Jared, Jared. I feel Jared, oh my Lord. These experiences, when you get older, you think you commit it now? As you grow in grace, you, sur you surrender more your will to God. Amen. It's called spiritual growth. And you can't be tomorrow what you are today. And day after tomorrow, you can't 
for to be what you was yesterday. It's a spiritual growth. Flesh grows down and spirit grows. Yes, sir. I surrender all. Yes. I'm going to teach you. Somebody called me. All y'all doing your Bible college is praise God. I said, what do you do? <laughs> hey, what do you do in your Bible college? We study. I said, why do you think we're praising God? We have studied and found a reason. He's worthy to be praising the mind. Now there's a whole she said, oh. <laughs> Listen, don't you assume that people know Jesus like you do. That's error. So you got to learn to know the Lord for yourself. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, he's good. He's good in spite of how you are, where you are, what you have done, what you are doing, and what you're going to do. He's just good. And he came to save people just like us. Amen. And see, we get so deep, we forget to teach. If we confess our sins, you can't run over that. That's the Bible. I don't know about walking a team of mules across a, a rickety bro a, 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 a bridge. Mules got a rhythm. You want to get those mules out of that rhythm before you get them across that rigid bro, because that rhythm. We all in down south. You don't know how to break that gate. You got a rain in your hand. Just keep doing that. Because they walk like this. So, when I want to break your gate, you keep going like this. I snatch you a little bit. <laughs> How come? I know how to drive mules. You know what they call a mule? Got a little three letter word for it. Start with an A. But an ass is not a mule. An ass is an ass. The male ass is female. It's called Jenny. Amen. You know you can't breed a mule with a mule and get nothing. Be thoroughbred. You breed an ass with a horse, you get a mule. But he's not thoroughbred, so you can breed a mule with a mule, you get nothing. Amen, somebody with your car with self. I learned this way down yonder in Mississippi land. And the mule got a better temperament than a horse. I said, a mule got better temperament than a horse. You can drive a horse till a hard string break. That mule going to sit down. You can get your whip. You can whip all your, I ain't going no further. <laughs> yes, sir. You learn all this when you grow up down south. This is important information. So you're going across a rigged debris. Don't take a team of horses across there. They're going to prance. The mules, they go like that. They feel it before they go on there. What we call the mule dumb. No, the horse is dumb. We're teaching the reality of truth. I told you today, I Looked in death's face twice today within an hour. That lake and I got tore completely up. 
you see that car and you swear nobody came out of that car alive. I keep hearing, I will never leave you. You see, you run over that script if you want to. But that's going to be a time. You're going to have to let God be God. I'm telling you, boy. And when the devil comes close enough, you've got to turn everything that is demonic loose. With your head, with your thought, with your intent, with your purpose. And you've got to cleave to Jesus. When I got in that terrible accident today, one word came out of my mouth. What was it? Jesus. Jesus. And they talked to me like I wasn't supposed to know where I was or who I was or how I would feel about what just happened. How come? They especially, they realized in an accident like this, ain't nobody going to walk away. I got up and was talking to him. I didn't know the blood was coming out of my nose. They put me in the ambulance. Before I got two miles of where my blood was flowing, it stopped. Now, let me tell you something. That's a miracle. It's a miracle for me to be bleeding and didn't know it. And I happened to go like that, blood all over my show sleeve. I said, oh, my nose is bleeding. James said, Dad, you didn't know you was bleeding? <laughs> you listen to me. You listen to me. When all hell break loose, you need a name to think about. Don't think about the hell and the one that's giving hell. You need a name to think about. <laughs> when things ain't going right, you need a name to think about. Jesus would fix it. You hear me? I'm a wit. I'm, I keep telling him, said, me, ain't got now kind of pain no why. Y'all take that for granted. So I keep telling you that. So the devil fixed a situation today to give me pain right in the front of my head where my mouth is. What are you trying to do? Shut my mouth. Can't get it done. Too late. Can't get it done. Can't get it. Now, there are, see, see, there are things going to happen in your life, not necessarily just like this, but it's going to come and try to throw you off. When something hits you, it's not supposed to move you. It's supposed to sink you. You're supposed to be firm. So just let me teach you how I feel. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Listen to me now. And he pitied. He had pity. He had pity on me. What is pity? Love and action. <laughs> That's what pity is. Love God's working for you. When you ain't able to do nothing for you. I'm sitting out in the car. People coming to other folk looking up. And I thought I heard this thing. Well done, you're not by myself. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That was my personal experience. You're going to have yours. So I'm telling you now. When the devil come, don't run. Write that down, Paulie. When the devil come. Hey! When the devil come, don't run. The scripture says, having done all, what? Stand. <laughs> so when I stood today, after that very serious accident, my nose is bleeding, but I was fulfilling scripture. I was standing. Took my son about 10 minutes to get there. I was so glad to see that man. 
You, you wouldn't believe how glad I can see my son. Oh, I got the help. I got the help. And he started interceding with the police. I'm his father. I'm a policeman. I'll get his insurance. I'll get his license. I'll get this. I'll get this. And he said, Dad, lay down in Because <laughs> I'm following him, right? <laughs> he said, Dad, lay down on <laughs> I feel jud, jud, jud. I feel jud, oh my Lord. Ain't no something. It's the grace. You're looking at a man that the devil tried to kill two times a day in one hour. But you need to get this in your testimony. When it comes to you and I, he can't get that done. I know he came to steal and to kill. But he can't steal from us. He can't kill us. He's all messed up and he's confused. So he's the author of Kamosetehe. Of Confirma Kamosetehe. Now, I just had left the hospital 20 minutes or 30 minutes. I had to take the car and drive it. Now, all those thousands of cars on that expressway. Now, don't you think that that power line had to break some other time when I was right there? It had to break to kill me. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Love the Lord. He my and <clears throat> Dick said, Long as I live. Look at here. <laughs> ha! You better listen to this old kind of religion in here. It saved my life twice a day and an hour. You wouldn't have known I'd been in an accident. Ain't no evidence of it. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Brother William in Saginaw. He brought me out. 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 He saved my life. He saved my life. Huh? You better forget all them old doo-doo songs and sing them songs that touch God. <clears throat> Any song that the saints sing is supposed to touch the heart of saints and sinners for God. So if you sure not got the Holy Ghost, and there's a sinner sitting right here next to you, when the power come up on you, he can feel it. He can feel, and he will act like he's saved just like you because of that power. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> I got rebuked with that letter today <clears throat> from a person that had a spirit of cowardice. And it tried to, it tried to adjust the rebuke by saying, I love you on the end. Well, what happened to the beginning? <laughs> Since Jesus Christ is saved yesterday. <laughs> day of evermore. How, how you hate me in the beginning and then love me on the end? You lying demon. But listen to me. Listen to me. I got that letter today. I had those terrible experiences of deliverance yesterday. So the devil going to try to make a statement and try to cancel out what God did for me yesterday. Listen, don't you let him do it. Don't let him do it. You know how good God been to you. Don't let him do it, saints. He's a trickster. He's smart. But he ain't smart enough to be saved, though. 
I said, he ain't smart enough to be saved. Amen. <clears throat> Genesis 17, our subject is the power of the blood of Jesus. I'm going to teach it to you until you get it. Did you know you can read the same verse <clears throat> depending on what spirit you in or what spirit is trying to deal with you? Amen. If you got the Holy Ghost, that same verse will minister to you. Amen. How come? It's God laid down flat. So he says, study. No means no study shows you approval. No. Study to show your, look at me. This is yourself. Amen. So you got to study to get approval from God for your flesh. A word would have no need to be ashamed, rightly. Divine this word of truth. That's a life time practice. So you will never know the word like the word know you. Because in the beginning was the word, you were now. I heard somebody say, teach him, Ray. Now, I don't know who it was. Thank you. I had two experiences. One of those experiences enough to make the hair raised on a bald head, man. One of them. And the nurses, they're working desperately, thinking I'm fixing to die. And I'm watching them. They're running and running and turning this on. And I'm sitting there, what's the, <laughs> what's the matter? Listen to me. Listen to me. The Holy Ghost was in the bed with me. He touched my body. He touched my soul. And I'm laying there smiling. I mean, they're working frantically as if I'm fixing to die. <laughs> See, they didn't know. Listen to me now. They just saw a sick man. Yeah. They didn't see a saved sick man. And there is a difference. I said there is a difference. And I'm laying there trying to be cool because I didn't want to get loud because I was in intensive care. You ain't supposed to get loud in intensive care. I'm sitting there. Lord, I thank you. I'm talking to you. Lord, I thank you. I want to say, Lord, I thank you. you don't do that in intensive care. You are getting intensive care. Amen. God specialized in giving you intensive. Intens you look at a miracle. He kept telling me, lay down. <laughs> they wanted to keep my back flat. They thought something had happened to my backbone because that's why you really live. Your nervous system is in your backbone. So they pull all my clothes off on top and started at the back then. Press, I heard here, no. Heard here, no. Heard here, by the time they get half my back, they look at it one another. What? Heard here, no. Does it hurt right here? <laughs> they trying to make me say I'm hurting. No, trick of the devil. You say it, you got it. And they think that that physical shock disrupted my mind. So they kept asking me, what's your name? What did you say your name was? Mm -hmm. They're thinking that I'm not there. I was there. And my friend was there. <laughs> You come a little with a computer on a little rack, look like that. What's your name? How old are you? Now, if I tell them how old are you, what year were you born? They check, <laughs> well, they're checking my, my mentality to see am I alert mentally. 
Because they saw all that blood. Listen, listen, listen. You need to get this scripture in your spirit. Jesus said, if I be for you. He did say it. I am more. I am more than the whole world that is against you. So right now the world is against us. But there's a contrast. Jesus said, never mind that. I'm more than the world that's against you. And listen to me. Listen, you can't just sing this. You got to live this. I had an opportunity today to look death in the face twice in 30 minutes. And I'm here. I'm here to tell you, you know God is a <laughs> If you die, die down my street there and look at my car, you'll be saying, he came out of this? See, in battle, they had a four-by-four shield. So the people in the front line put that shield down. People in front of them put that shield down. People in front of them. So if you've got 30 lines of shield, the person in the back ain't got no shield. Huh? So you have to expect to face the enemy. Are you listening to me? Oh, we... And see what they did? The people in the front line lift their shield up like that. Everybody behind them laid their shield on top of that shield on top of that shield. So if you look from up there where the devil is, you see a solid steel body. Can't get through it. Can't come forward into it. He can't come up from behind. The Holy Ghost got his case back there. You got to rub it. That, why? The devil don't want us getting along. They don't want us, he don't want us fighting him together. He hates when we come together and talking about you a lie, you a failure. Back off me, Satan. He, he don't want us agree. He want us to discuss. When you discuss, you got two points. One got one side, one got another. We did that in high school. They do that in courts right now. Whether you're right or wrong, you hire your lawyer because he's, he's trained to plead your case, whether you're a murderer or not. I know a lawyer. Look at what I just said. And he'll plead your case, whether you're guilty or not. What's his name? What's his name? Jesus. 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 All my life I've been here. I don't know what it meant until I got good to say. He's a friend that's stick up a center. That's all. He's a friend that's close to a brother. Listen, I explained that twice today within one hour. Twice yesterday. Was it yesterday, baby? Yesterday. yesterday. They were trying to kill me twice in one hour. Now, them be, see, you got 120 votes come in your house, maybe 210 or something. But them wires that come up there, they had to carry all those houses in there. That's why I got some power on it, brother. And I see when you break a wire like that, he be going like that, spitting fire. That wire, lay down in front of me, brother. Lay down. Lay down. Hey, lay down. Power. When I saw that man take a wooden broomstick and start moving, I said, that's why I got power on it. Laying right there, I could have reached out and touched it. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. God been on my side today. Now the thing that came against you might not be as evident as the thing that came against me. But from this morning till now, the devil's trying to wipe you out. See, an evil thought is worse than that electric power. Because the electric power could do to kill my body. But when he encourage you to sin, your soul just died. <laughs> Go tell him about 
over the hills and everywhere I go. Well, that's what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> you, you, you got this little sparrow in this cage. You had him in there for six, eight months, you know. And you must not leave that door open. He coming out of that cage. And you got to, to get him, you got to catch it to put it back. I broke loose today. I broke loose from death twice today within one hour. And if you could see my car right down the street down there, he said, nobody can get out of that line. And I hit the thing in front of me so hard, it jammed my front door so it wouldn't open on my side. Lord, I said, God, I know the Lord will make a way somehow. God said, go out to passion this time. And he said to me, stand up. I didn't know my nose would be done. I'm standing up. I'm looking down Saginaw Street for my son. Once I saw my son, I got real manners to hear God. Because I know my son loves me. Yeah. Now, I, I ain't got no doubt about that. Yeah. Now, this is what God would like to say about us. I know my children love me in spite of now, that's when love stays and infatuation goes. He said, I'll never leave you. I love you. I'll never forsake you. Even to the end of the world. That wasn't the end of the world today. It, it tried to, it, he tried to make it into my life. Twice in one hour, church. And see, I'm an electrician. I know leave that while alone. Now, there's no telling what will happen to my wife and I inside the car if that, that naked wire had touched the top of the car. Because it got to go to the metal to get to the rubber to go to the ground. And we sat between the metal and the ground. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Now, you can look at me like I'm a monkey with three tails if you want to. I've been delivered from death. Two times in one day. Two times in one hour. How come the truck had to break that power line when I was sitting right there? When the car's all the way. He was after me. He wanted to shut my mouth. But he don't know. He just opened it wider. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I give you glory. That's what he did for us. And I, I can feel you praising him in here for now for what he did for me. I'm praising him in here for what he's done for you. He delivered you from things today you didn't even know about. It. And when I prayed for them moving my car from the wrecker to the, to the yard across the street of my house, I had one dollar, one uno, one dollar. And I gave that to my wife. <laughs> I said, do what you can with this one dollar. <laughs> See, I had a hundred and thirty-one dollars, and James had about eight or ten dollars. It cost us a hundred and forty dollars. Man said she'd be 180. Listen to me. If you're saved, you ain't got to tell people. Them people never seen us before. I said, I have to go to the bank. He said, Give me what you got. Did you hear that? Them people got them record business. They don't do that to everybody, they go out of business. So we cut him out $139. James, I got one more. He said, that's enough. 
See, that equipment they got called big money. Them big old trucks and lift up trucks. They don't give you them trucks. Now, let me tell you something. You don't have to be dressed no certain way for people to recognize you love God. Are you listening to me? I didn't have the suit on. I had my old blue jeans on, cap sitting on one side, trying to dog, dodge the rain, boots on. Let me tell you something. Even to a devil, you can't hide Jesus. How come? He's the light of the world. So let your light so shine <laughs> that the world might what? See, he, he saw Jesus the day in me. Saw Jesus the day in me. Them junk laws make, them junk laws make a bunch of money. You car get in the wreck, you go out there, they charge you 65 or 70, 75, 80 dollars a day. And that'll eat your wreck up. <laughs> so James says, before we do any other business, let's get that car to go. So I ask them, how much is this metal worth to you? That's what I asked the junk yard man. He said, put it close to nothing. I said, take it home. James and I took just a few little pieces of metal out there. It was $200. You could carry it in your hand. And here's a whole car. The devil specialized. Yeah, and taking advantage of your negative experience. What do you think the funeral home does? You know you love your mama. Now, this would be a nice casket. It's only 18500 They play on your love and your emotion. And your ignorance. I don't care if the casket ain't nothing but a wooden box. It's going to serve the same purpose. Because in a few days, mama ain't going to be there at all. Ain't going to be no evidence of her being there. And you just burying her house anyhow. She gone. One play tucker. I said one play tucker. Everybody go one play tucker. You're going to teach you going to. Take an upward flight or a downward drop. Only thing, when you take an upward flight, you got a place to stop. Amen. My Bible says you're going to fall into hell forever. So hell, hell can't be the earth because the earth is just, just a little thimble. And, and if heaven's up there and you're going to fall into hell forever, every second you widen the gap between you. We, we need to live right. And we need to teach this book so folk can understand it. If it ain't right, it's wrong. If it's wrong, the blood with your faith will make it right. You need to quickly to learn this simple stuff. If we confess our sins, don't be running over it. God is faithful. That is, he'll do it every time. He's faithful and it's just, too. Yes, sir. To forgive us our sins, look now. Now your sins forgive us and cleanse us. Now go home and study that out. Because all unrighteousness, sin is sin is filthy. He said, I forgive you of all your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What does that mean? Any thought of your yesterday. Ha, ha, ha. Because the devil, he'll sure try to bring it back. They come to I know you when. I said, no, you don't. You knew me then. But you don't know me now. Oh, what y'all teach down there? I said, not what? Then what y'all teach? I said, Jesus. All night? I said, yeah, and all day, too. <laughs> see, see, I can sing to you, if you saw what I saw. Mister, I had two experiences within an hour yesterday. 
death was close to me. But see, death can't get closer to you than Jesus is. So death is always outside of Jesus. Because he's a friend that stick. He, he'll take good care. I'm going to teach you, but something needs to be said about God's deliverance. And the nurse kept asking me, how old are you? What they're thinking about is sending a doctor an accident report so he can cancel my driver's license. That ain't going to happen. Now, he might get canceled, but I'm going to drive till I get ready to quit. And I'm not going to defy the law either. You know what the devil trying to do? Shut me down. Yes, I can get it done. If I can't kill his body, I take his driving license. My driving license don't get me where I'm going. My voice does. You take my driving license, you can't take my television ministry. You wait till you pastor. There ain't going to be now second of now minute that you're not under attack. Amen. The devil make you see that quarterback in that football? They ain't after that end. They don't want that guard. They want the man <laughs> with the ball. Hey, hey, if they get him down on the ground, he has to start all over fresh. No, sir. Somebody wrote a song, I'm running, I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. <laughs> if you're a Jew, too. I said, if you're a Jew, I'm looking at that camera now. Anywhere there's electronics, they can see me. I told you a man called me from Jamaica and from Africa. We see you on television, man. It was 11 o'clock in the morning. I said, did somebody send you a tape? No, man. You lie, man. I didn't discuss with the man because he said, I'm looking at you. I said, Lord, I what? God, thank you. It's amazing what Jesus can do. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to teach you next time I see you. But something happened to me yesterday. The devil tried to take me out twice in an hour. Now, the last thing you want to do is touch that power line. You're going to fly. And when I saw that man moving it with a dry broom handle, I knew it was hot. Now, you're not going to break that power line and let it fall right down and be still. That power going to flesh it like that. Didn't move. Good God Almighty. What a man. Down in Mississippi, my friend, you said, who wouldn't serve a God like that? Amen. And we said, he's a friend to the end. He's he longer than that. If you need a friend, stay with you to the end. Call on Jesus. Oh, we, I'm just praising God tonight. Y'all forgive me. But if you had been where I was yesterday, see, I was talking like this 20 minutes after I got to the hospital. And they were just amazed at me as I was with them. They was wondering, why isn't this man paralyzed? And I'm wondering, why are they thinking I should be? <laughs> huh? If I be for you, you need to slow down and read these scriptures with your spirit. It was Jesus that said it. Hey, if I be for you, I am more than the whole world that's against you. Read it backwards. The whole world is against you. It is now. But I'm more. So we got the more. 
with us. I say, we got the more with us. And when I looked in my wallet and didn't see but one dollar, that was the envelope from Chicago from Sister Gillian. Her tithe was in it. She said, I was led by the Lord to pay my tithes to you this month. You can't be broke with Jesus. Come on here. How come listen to it? The scripture said, My God shall don't say it too fast. Shut up in here. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So glory is God's warehouse. And Jesus brings your supply from God through the wall hall, from the warehouse to you. Amen. So Jesus is your deliverer man. He brings to you the good of God. Yes, he did. He died to do it. He's good at it too. He... Sometimes, I know, see y'all in my age, so you know. Sometimes I just sit and I just cry. This tear just come out of my chair. I'll be thinking, Lord, you know you're good to me. See, 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 for me to tell him he's good to you, I got to first experience that goodness to me. And I'm supposed to share the goodness that God is to me with you. You show the goodness of God with you to someone else. That's saying that you're your brother's keeper. Oh, we kept by love, saved by love, delivered by love, sanctified by love. Because love never what? It never come on such a love. The devil just asked me, you got to go to the chiropractic doctor tomorrow. Give your wife your last dollar. I didn't say that was all the money I had. There's a thing called a BANK. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if I go get the money mile, I don't know if I go get and borrow something out, but when I leave that bank, I got bank out have the money. When I go in that bank, everybody, including the President of the bank. Hey, Dr. Wheeler, stop talking to the people that. Listen to me. Holiness demands attention. Did y'all hear me? You ain't got to say nothing, but you got to be so. Be the body of Kramasataha. And you will get recognition from people that sometimes don't even know you. Give a telephone. Leave her teller. Come outside to give me a hug. People in the line, brother. She put face back, face. I got to hug the preacher. And she go back, and the other one come around and get her a hug. The president of the bank, look at him and won't say nothing. <laughs> the love of God is supposed to be shared abroad, Amen. even in the bank, saints. <laughs> we some kind of people. I said, you and I, we some kind of people. We'll praise God falling out of a tree and thank him for the fall. There's never a wrong time to say, Lord, I would. There ain't no wrong time to say that. Of course, I couldn't say it all yesterday when I was in that wreck. Only thing that came to my mind was one word. <laughs> Jesus. Blood. All, I didn't know blood was all over my face until James comes to that. What happened? <laughs> 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 
listen to me. A physical jolt can knock you up and make you unaware of the natural. Been there. Done it two times. How come? God is on my side. And he's no respect of person. And when you're a sinner, this, this, he said, whosoever will. That's a sinner. Let him come and drink the waters of life. I once was lost, but that's a good testimony, brother. You see those old down south songs? When all hell break loose, if you ever heard them, they'll come back. It's not my father, not my mother standing in need of prayer. It's me, oh Lord. I do. It's good. It's good to see God take death away from you twice in one hour. And they tell me, be quiet. No, I ain't neither. Make a joyful noise unto God, all you land. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph and say, Hallelujah. That devil be. <laughs> the last thing the devil wants the church to do is lift up holy hands. Just like we don't know what conversation we're saying, the devil don't know either. But he knows it's related to some good God getting ready to do for us and some bad God getting ready to do for him. He know that God is on our side. He got no doubt about that. So he get around the corner. Hey, psst, psst, hey. Joshua said, if Baal be God, then serve him. He did say. He said, but if God be God, <laughs> serve him. You and your house. Amen. Did y'all get that and your house back? Amen. You and your family serve him. So if you serve him and your family not serving, just a matter of time because you live in the scripture. I say you live in the scripture. You doing your part. Give God time to do his part. He'll say that son. He'll say that daughter. He'll say that husband. He'll say that wife. Because that's the business he's in. He said, I came that you might have life. And that you might have that life more abundant. Now, that's not the name of the church. That's the name of God's storehouse. Now, you see, we're not to be bearers of bad news. That's enough good news for us to tell one another until the cloud busts. And the best statement I know to tell you, you know God show is a good news. I said that 724. And he proves it over and over and over. He proved what I say. Because as a man thinking his heart, that's the way he is. I got praises in my heart. I praise him when I'm asleep. Have sweet dreams, too. Wake up, don't remember nothing but the glory. You know, every time, every dream you, you dream ain't supposed to be over here on this side. It's for that other side over there. Dreams and visions. I can be driving my car and have a vision. See, just as plain. You don't see vision with your eyes. See, vision with your spirit. And God don't show you something that is spiritual alert to take your attention from driving that car. God ain't no fool. I'm going to read so you think you've been to Bible college. When somebody called me before I left home, I want to come to your Bible college. How long is it going to take me to get a degree? <laughs> I, I said, come and we'll talk about it. They didn't come. 
Listen to me. Learning how to be heaven's evangelist is a lifetime job. Because every soul you meet got another situation than that one you just met. And only the Holy Ghost can tell you how to relate to that soul. A woman sent me a letter day, I tell you again. Cursing me out with a letter. How come? Because I want her Dana. In 30 years, she only been here two or three times. She said, I don't have no gas to come to your church. She come to church in Flint right close to me. Let me tell you what people don't want, saints of God. They don't want this book. The book make the sinner book. But this same book says to the saint, come unto me. Didn't it say that? But now look at the other part of it, all oh, you that labor. We got problems. They said, don't touch it, and their nose is going to bleed. See that problem? Well, how can my nose bleed when the devil told me it's going to bleed? He's a liar. And if it bleeds, so what? I'm talking about the healer. Now you need to see the reality of those two miracles yesterday within an hour. The devil literally tried to kill me twice in one hour. And my son's so used to it now, he called me and said, Dad, meet me. We're going to move the car. He just know I was all right. How come? He been taught. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. He directed our path now. We're here because God directed us to come here. In my lawn business, I'm 78. I'm going to have to pick up my trailer. How old you are, Pastor Wheeler? I said, I'm 78. And you going in lawn business? I said, no, sir, I am in lawn business. I said, why do you think I'm spending this $3,000 for this trailer? I ain't buying it to carry my Bible around in. When you get older, you remember this now. You can tell the people, I made preparation to go to heaven. So all of the things I'm doing down here, I'm making preparation to live here until he called me. Amen. Don't sit down and call that holiness. And I, 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 when, I, when I pulled my, all my shirts off the day and the nurse on my body, I said, pretty, ain't it? <laughs> Chest that I'm 78. Chest that how come I keep this body working, preacher? I keep it busy. And they said, Ray Bob, they said, all the muscles, how old are you? I said, I'm 78 on both sides. It's amazing what praising will do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have made preparation to die by my faith in Mr. Life. Amen. I am making preparation to live by my faith in Mr. Life. Jesus is the answer for the world today. You, you need to try him. You, you look at me like a cow looking at a new gate. You wait till you get 78. You're going to tell the people, same thing. You know, child, God show is a what? You, you'll never get tired of saying that. 
Because every breath, Lord, I thank you. Lord, because th- it's, it's a gift. I'm an old body. I didn't say man. Amen. You better learn to talk like me so you can get 78. My conversation brought me, brought me two, through two events of death yesterday within one hour. I know how to get over. Lord, I what? Thank you. Praise you, Jesus. Blood coming out of thank you. <laughs> huh? I'm here too. See, James ain't where I am. He ain't supposed to be. He's my son. He's little. Young. Young preacher. But when I talk to him, he come right where I am. Right where I am. When I say it, he believes it. He's growing. But he made preparation. Somebody will be teaching you tonight. Somebody will be teaching you Thursday night. Somebody will be teaching you Sunday morning. He said, Dad, I made preparation. I said, I cancel every one. Dad, you ain't going to teach tonight, is you? I said, no, I'm not going to teach tonight. I'm going to teach the saints. <laughs> oh, Dad. Listen to me. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you got. You can't see at 44 what a man can see at 78. Amen. Every year between 44 and 78, you're learning. Now, you can believe where he is, but you cannot know what he know. You can know who he know. So this book says, study. To show you, 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 and study just don't mean read. Pray. Lord, help me. Show me. Give me a word. Give me understanding. Give me knowledge. Give me patience. Patience to endure. And faith to forgive. You got to have forgiveness if you're gonna ever learn anything about Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. No, 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 no. That, that's one gift the devil sure enough gonna to try to give you a whole lot of work on. Forgiveness. I forgive you, but I ain't gonna forget. That's a lie. God said, I forgive you of my sins. And I put them behind me in the sea of forgetfulness. And I will not remember them no more. You can't make God remember that last sin you did. Now, now when you get to heaven, you ask him how that can be. Because he's God. And, and some people call him God Almighty. And, and I go so far to say he's my friend at Como Sata. He, 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 he proved it over and over and over. God has proven to be my friend over and over and over again. I'm going to tell you until you believe what I say. I had a problem praying for this church, paying for this church after I retired. The tithes wasn't big enough. My retirement wasn't big enough. And you... You get about 80% of something paid for, that bank won't that thing bad. God sent me help. And that person is present now. God sent me help. That's why I don't mind saying, Lord, I thank you. You listen to me now and you learn. Never mind all this deep stuff. We are our brother's keeper. The book says it. And the book also said, Bear ye, bear ye one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. So loving one another is fulfilling the law. Because God is what? Love, boy, love. L-O-V-E. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I, I, I want to tell you, because people say I'd come, but you got them women preachers down there. I say, I ain't got no women preachers nowhere. I can call them. Yeah, but you let them preach? 
I said, what did they do in your church? Well, they go, I said. If you want me to heed it, read it. If you want me to tote it, quote it. If you don't know, don't show. Say the other part of it. Shut up your hell-bound mouth. See, this ministry is like sugar. Now, to enjoy sugar, you got to taste it. You just can't look at it. Huh? In order to taste it, you got to get it inside of you. And that's what people run from. And I heard Jesus say, come unto me, not run from me. Come unto me, all you that labor. That's a sinner person. And a heavy laden, the wages of sin, wage, payment, weight. But the gift of God, now this is what you preach when you go somewhere. The Church of Christ called me. Would you come and preach with us? Baptist Church called, will you come and preach for us? How come? I'm in the book. I'm in the book. I think I preach at the Church of Christ next month, either the 14th or the 18th. 18th? 18th of February. People don't ask you to come to speak to them if they don't want to hear what you got to say. Come on, come on. And I've been saying the same thing now for now 40 years. God show us a what? Oh, Lord, you can't get away from that. And that God will sometimes physically show you how good he is. That's what he did for me twice yesterday. He moved death twice in, in one hour. I feel jeered, jeered, jeered. I feel jeered, oh my Lord. Now, you've heard those old southern people sing, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere I go, Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's, that's what your job is. You're preachers. Amen. You're gospel preachers. Amen, amen. You don't let sinners preach to you. Amen. 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 Come on here. <laughs> Jesus said, Whosoever have an ear to ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God just told me he would have been telling me all my life. God show is a He's a good God. Now you're going to see more praises on those tape than information. But without the proper information, you can't have praise. I've been telling you for an hour and 40 minutes. God been good to me this week. Amen, amen. And you need to say, me too. My, 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 my pastor, my only pastor, Sister Rio, will say, God will protect you from harm seen and unseen. Now, he protected me yesterday from harm seen. But he protect us every day from harm not seen. That is, what you can't see can kill you. And God, his eyes are over the sparrow, and I know he watches over me. I sing because I'm happy. <laughs> Yay! I sing because I'm free. 
his eyes are over the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. See, see how that song, see how that song make a sanctified person feel? I sing because I'm happy. I, I sing because I'm free. And I'm happy and free because his eyes. You know, a sparrow is a small little fella. His eyes are over the sparrow, and I know he come out said to hey, he watches over me. I'm telling you, yesterday he delivered me twice from death within one hour. His eyes were over me in that one hour. His eyes were over you in that same hour. Things might have come that we could recognize, but we know that devil don't ever give life. Whenever he come, he come as a killer. And Jesus stepped between him like just good. God Almighty. Listen. Don't go too deep in the spiritual gifts. Because if God opened our eyes wide enough, we couldn't sleep. We couldn't sleep. There are some things in this world that just simply are not our business. Our safety is not our business. Our salvation is not our business. Amen. Our seal, our strength, our fruit bearing is not our business. We have loaned our soul to Jesus and he plant us where he wants us to be and makes us to grow whatever fruit he wants us to grow. Whenever he wants to, we are in his hands. Amen. We're in his hands. So don't make no plans for tomorrow. Jesus ain't through with you yet. Today. When I teach like this, the real gospel, when I go home, my soul rejoices. You think I praise God when I be with you, mister? When I get by myself, it's Lord, I thank you. Lord, I pray. Lord, I give you glory. You better learn how to praise God or you ain't going to never learn nothing. Amen. You don't learn how to be saved. Amen. 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 You surrender yourself to God and learn how to praise. And you be learning how to praise him until he comes. One of these days, the last I thank you, he goes to come up here, thank you, and in a moment, and it took another an eye. It ain't going to take us long to get to heaven because heaven already is in us. So heaven is going to take us to heaven where Jesus is. Now deal with that. Heaven came down in glory, filled my soul to my Jesus. He took my sins away, turned my midnight into day. Jesus came down in glory filled my soul. How many verses have I taught you in this hell mercy? In this hour and 55 minutes. I told you what you already know. I confirm your testimony. God show been good to me. Amen. Say that out loud. God show been good to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what the world needs to know, saints. That we are chosen vessels. We are chosen. Well, I am. To show folks the praises of God. In season. Did you know this ain't going to make you popular? Folk ain't going to just love you because you love God. Amen. No. Folk that don't love God going to hate you. Because when you love God's in their presence, you condemn them. 
So they don't want your presence. How you doing, sister? Oh, I'm all right. <laughs> Go on now, leave me alone. I had them tell me, you praise God your way. <laughs> and I'm praising my way. I said, wait a minute. If you're not praising in my way, your way is wrong. Make a joyful noise. And as the Lord, all ye what? Land. So everybody saved is in that land. Praising God the same way. For the same purpose. He is a good God. And that my soul what? No right way. Your soul no stuff your head can't perceive. My head can't understand. How can you bleed so profusely? And as soon as you get in the ambulance, the blood stops coming. How can you lay there, all your clothes off down to your waist? You know it was cold, man. They don't care how cold it is. I'm laying there, put some cover over me. We got to check ourselves up. You be on check a dead man if you don't put some. Come on. When they got through checking my vitals, they left as if they were disappointed. God always amazing that devil. <laughs> How you get to be so healthy at 78? Praise him. See? I keep myself healthy by bragging on the one that's keeping me healthy. So my health is in the name of Jesus. So I always tell you, Jesus, 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 Jesus. He's a healer, healer. Yes, sir. He's a healer, healer, healer. He's a healer, healer, healer. Who are we talking about? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's a savior, savior, savior. He's a savior, savior, savior. Savior, savior, savior. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now let me tell you something. All heaven is pleased with us. Because we're talking about Jesus. Now, if they want some foolishness, go to the hair parlor, or the barber shop, or the pool hall, or something. But when you come here, our conversation is Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord, for Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Jesus. When I'm sick, Jesus. When I'm lonely. Jesus. When I'm broke, Jesus. When I'm sad, Jesus. When I'm happy, Jesus. Jesus is my everything. Now see, I've given you enough Jesus for you to receive your doctor's degree in praise it. Uh, uh. You notice I just give you assignments. Every now and then I teach you to nurture the assignment. But I keep seeing in my heart, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. So if I'm going to teach you anything related to God, I've got to teach you the word that is God and how to apply to yourself and to others in spite of. Now, it's that in spite of stuff you've got to have experience in. Come on here. Because you, you need to get this. I know you don't know this. I'm going to tell you anyway. Everybody you love don't love you back. Amen. Are you listening to me? And everybody you expect to love you back don't. But I know somebody will love you to the grave. What, 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 what is his name? Jesus. Jesus. Mr. Lover, in the morning and the evening when the sun go down. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That man wrote a lot of songs put on that album. 
We just put that song on the end to fill up some space. It caught the roof. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's a friend, friend, friend. He's a friend, friend, friend. He's a friend, friend, friend. Who you talking about? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's a doctor, doctor, doctor. He's a doctor, doctor, doctor. Yeah. He's a doctor, doctor, doctor. We talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now, I'd like to teach you like this every time you come and have you do the homework that I assigned to you. The homework that I assigned to you will give you a deeper will to hear me when I tell you, you know God sure is a good God. You'll find that in the homework. God is a good God. How come? Because the Bible tells me so. God is what? Love. And love covers a multitude of fault and sin. So when that sinner come to church, don't look about the sin, think about the Savior. Because there was a time you was a sinner in church. And the Savior saved you. Amen. And God is not a respecter of sin. And I heard him out of his mouth say, whosoever will, say to you, let him come. See, the devil will try to hold you back from salvation. And once you get salvation, he try to stunt your growth. Not here. Not, I know God is big. And that's all I have to know. I'm Pastor Dr. James L. Wheeler, and I got about 30 seconds to tell you what I've been telling you for two hours. My God is a good God. Trust him, trust him, trust him. Bye. You've got a big hand. <laughs>